uh, Taiwan and what's happening right now to Taiwan. Let me just state this. Speaker Pelosi's trip, again, the Chinese chose to be outraged. This is on them, not on her. But was her trip worth it, given all the fallout? I think it was, Chuck, uh, because we need to be very clear uh, that China doesn't get to dictate which U.S. officials go to Taiwan and when they go to Taiwan. As you know, we send congressional delegations uh, frequently. A former Speaker of the House has been uh, to Taiwan uh, in the past. And what President Xi decided to do was manufacture a crisis uh, over uh, Pelosi's visit. He's got as you know, this fall, the, the Communist Party Congress is coming up. He's seeking an unprecedented uh, third term as leader of China. And this is saber rattling and, you know, chest right. thumping by President Xi. Look, it, it's, uh, it does look like that's what it is. But, and so I understand in the moment we're trying to de-escalate. But what do, what do you want to see the United States, what do you want to see the Biden administration do in the next, say, three to six months to reassure the Vietnams, the Japans, the Philippines, who are nervous about what China's doing here. They're nervous about we're gonna, if we're going to have Taiwan's back. Do we have to send a message again that we're going to have their back? Well, I think we've been very clear, and the Biden administration has been clear, that we are adhering to U.S. policy, which is that we uh, recognize our one China policy, but we've also been firm and straight from the very start that we will oppose any effort to reunify Taiwan uh, by force, uh, by violence. Um, and we've reassured our Japanese partners and others of that. In fact, Chuck, I, I think this Chinese action of putting missiles into J Japan's economic zone, exclusive economic zone, is going to backfire. I think it's going to cause Japan to increase its defense spending and seek even closer uh, military engagement and cooperation with the United States, which is already good. So I, I think this is going to backfire on China. Yes, we have to de-escalate. We also have to be firm in making, what our, making our policy clear. You think it's inevitable that China's going to make a run at Taiwan in the next five years? I don't think it's inevitable. We need to help Taiwan make that as difficult as possible for China. And we've been doing that by supplying China, excuse me, supplying Taiwan uh, with military assistance. We need to continue to do that uh, to make Taiwan into the, the porcupine uh, so that when, you know, China looks at Taiwan, it realizes that this is going to be a, a hell of a fight and not a winnable fight. And I do think uh, when they look to what Putin tried to do in Ukraine, uh, they will see how a determined people can thwart uh, someone like uh, a, a dictator like, like Putin, who of course thought he was going to walk into Kiev in a matter of weeks, and, and that, was not, that was not possible. Look, for a long time, no U.S. official wanted to describe our relationship with China in strictly adversarial terms. But how do we not look at the cutting off of military ties, climate ties, immigration ties, all these things, and not say we're in a Cold War with China? Well, I don't think we're in a Cold War with China yet. A lot of that depends on what China does next. And there's no doubt that President Xi has escalated, um, you know, China's actions against Taiwan, even before the Pelosi visit, and has been more aggressive uh, throughout the region. Uh, at the same time, we have been trying to cooperate with them on these other measures, as you say. I believe they'll be back at the table on those measures. It is important that we have that military to military a dialogue, but it is important that we also confront and check China, uh, where it's trying to export its model of authoritarianism around the world in Africa, the Middle East, and other places.